Welcome to Jatai Academy. I'm Russell Mays, Director of Content. Today we're going to do a little study on the iconic Jennifer Aniston. She's got amazing hair and uh, so we're going to take a look at it and see what makes it tick. We're going to pick a style, we're going to try to copy it and see how close we can get to the original. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so I've gone through and downloaded uh, a bunch of pictures of, of Jennifer Aniston and her, her awesome hair. And the thing that really stands out to me is, is even through all the years, the shapes have always been very, very simple and straightforward. But it's the texture that really makes it stand out and really gives her that kind of signature flowiness and movement to it. So if I'm looking at a picture like this, I'll post the picture up here in the corner so you can get a better look at it. Uh, but it looks to me like this is the one we're going to go for. It looks to me like it's just a lob, uh, a little longer in the front with a little bit of face framing, and then just a lot of texture. Now, if I analyze the texture, the texture to me doesn't seem to be done with the razor because I think if you're doing this with the razor, it's gonna create a lot more separation to it. And her hair doesn't seem to separate into pieces, it just seems to diffuse, keeping the same shape but just diffused and taking some of the weight out of the ends. So to me, it looks like it was done with a thinning scissor just going in blunt all the way down through the end to remove some weight because it appears to me she's got a grip of hair. And if I was to go through and slide cut, taking that weight out or point cut internally to take the weight out or even razoring, it's going to create a lot more separation than I think these pictures are showing me. So I'm going to go through, give her a lob, point cut everything, a little bit of face framing around the front and then texturize it and see how close I can get. So, <laughs> I'm crossing my fingers. Okay, start off with an off-center part to the crown, crown to the occipital bone, occipital bone to the mastoid. This is my first baseline that I'm gonna build my shape off of. I'm gonna start in the center. I'm gonna go through Now here I'm looking and seeing where it falls in relation to her shoulder and then the picture and where that's going to fall. So I'm thinking we're going to go about right there. Then we're just going to go through point cut straight across and then we're going to point cut the opposite way to clean it up. Well, I'm okay with that. So we're going to continue on. Now whatever my parting line is, that's the line that I'm going to follow with my shape. Cut from the center forward, take my time, be patient, don't cut myself, and I want to build a little bit of length as I work around the shoulder into the front. Not a whole lot, but just, just enough to build up a little bit of a corner. Same thing on the other side. Comb that down, cut from the center towards the front on both sides of the head. After I've got my initial line, I'm just going to go through and continue section by section by section by section until I finish cutting everything one length. Now one thing I like to do is in each section that I take, like so the first section I started in the middle and then I went to the right, then I went to the left. The next section 
I went in the middle, I went to the left, and then to the right. So I'll alternate which side that I'll start on. So this section, I'm going to start on the right side and move forward. I just feel that by alternating which sides that I go, I tend to get a better balance. One thing I really wanted to emphasize is when I'm combing, especially on thick hair, it gets magnified. When I'm combing, I want to make sure I comb everything clean from the roots all the way through to the end. So if it takes me several times to comb the section to get everything clean, then that's what I'll do. Now when I look at her face framing, her face framing is very smooth as it goes down. So there's not like a, 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 a weighty, long kind of bang and then tapered. It just tapers all the way down. So that means I'm going to start from a very small piece right here in the center and then work that angle down. To separate her face frame, I'm going to take the first flat part of the head right down to the high point of the hairline over the ear. This is all the hair that has the tendency to fall in her face. Okay, so let's take a small piece right here, determine where we want that to hit. We had looked at it and we say somewhere around the mouth to the chin. So start here and I'm going to take a little nibble right there. It's going to be my short piece and then I'm going to slowly rough cut that down. I'm not worried about this being perfect right now. I just want to get a rough shape going from short to long. And you'll notice I'm combing this straight down. I don't want to introduce any movement into this. If I start to pull this section forward, I'm introducing movement so that the hair flows back. I don't want the hair to flow. I just want everything to hang solid. So combing it straight down in its natural fall, taking my time, angling my fingers, short to long. Now I don't have to be precise in the line that I cut, but I do have to be precise in my application of the cut line. So when this falls, I want to make sure we're getting a nice even flow from the shortest part down to our longest part. All right, now we're going to take our small piece that we started off with here. I'm going to move that to the other side and I'm going to repeat the same thing on this side. Now you noticed on the left, it was easy for me to cut short going down. 
Now when I start to cut the right side, it's not going to be easy for me to cut short going down unless I flip my hand. So what I'll do is when I comb this down, I'll angle my fingers the way that I think the line wants to go. And now I'll bring my hand on the other side and cut short to long. And we'll just go through and rough cut initially and then start to fine tune as we go. Okay, I'm okay with that. So now we're going to take the hair behind it, comb it straight down, and you notice there's only going to be a little bit right here at the very bottom. So we'll just clean that up. Now when I take the next section back, you'll notice that I'm combing straight down. I'm not pulling all that hair forward. I want to cut it exactly where it's going to fall, which is going to be down to the side. Comb everything straight down its natural fall. There's that little nibble through there. Not much to cut on that side at all. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to blow it dry, get everything nice and smooth, so that way I can see exactly how much texture I'm putting in when I hit it with the thinning scissors. All right, so we'll be right back. We've got our basic shape in. I think the length looks pretty good. I think the shape looks pretty good. It's nice and flat back here. We got a little face framing around the front like she has. Could probably do a little more, I think, but we'll see how it looks after we uh, texturize it and thin it out. But I think the overall shape is pretty good. Now, to really make this pop, it's all about getting the right texture to it. And the texture is gonna come from your artistic eye and you just seeing and thinning a little bit and then taking a little more and a little bit more and a little bit more. Now, you obviously don't wanna take too much because then you're, you end up with no hair but you definitely want to put in a lot of texture to it to get that softness. So to get myself warmed up and the feeling for it, I'm going to start in the back here. So I'm just going to take underneath and I will not do as much in the back as I may do around the front and around the sides. So I'm going to start here with my Jatai thinners and you'll notice that it has like tangs on both sides. So if I'm going to want the hair to move up, then I'll put the cutting blade, which is the straight blade on top. If I want it to be more controlled and, and cup underneath, then I'll put the straight blade underneath. So we're going to go through, start, section some of that out, and I'll just hold out about two thirds of the way, just a few inches on the bottom and hit that through and then comb all of that hair out so I can start to see the shape soften up. And you'll see it almost instantaneously when you go through and you hit it a couple of times with a thinning scissor, it collapses that volume and gives it more movement. So that's what we're gonna go through and do is section by section by section, I'm gonna go through and try to hit it five, six, seven, eight, nine, the same amount of times throughout the entirety of each section that I cut. Now, sometimes I may have to hit it more depending on certain sections of the head may be thicker. So we're just gonna continue. We got that there. About the same length away, the cutting blade is underneath. The straight blade is underneath. And I'll go through and start to take that. Now, we still got our same shape. I'm just collapsing the shape and giving us a little bit more texture. The more texture that it has, the more movement that it's going to have. A 
next section. Now, as I add sections and I go to the next one and the next one, I want to be mindful that I'm not re-thinning hair that I've already thinned. So I want to be mindful of my sections as I go through. Now, as I start to section some of this, this looks fine. This looks thicker. So where it looks fine, I'll pull that out. Now you'll notice that we're starting to get a diffused kind of texture. It's not separating into pieces. Comb that through. There we go. Now if you don't have a thinning scissor that's seamless like this one, and what I mean by seamless is that when I take and what I mean by seamless is when I cut the section, I don't see a straight line being cut and exposed from where I'm thinning. It just diffuses everything together. If you don't have one of these seamless type of thinning scissors, you may want to go in and point cut internally as opposed to just going across the entirety of the section. Now we can start to see some separation and some diffusion of our shape through there as I start getting around into the sides. Be mindful. I'm looking and seeing what's coming out. Ah, I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. And then I'll just continue that through the rest of the haircut. Okay, I think we got a little more hair on the right side underneath. I think that this sort of texture is what really gives Jennifer Aniston her signature kind of pop and movement to it. And it's all from that horizontal thinning that's going from about the last three or four inches down. So it gives it just a nice diffusion of the shape, but the shape is still solid. It's not overtly uh, texturized with a lot of separation and a lot of like wispiness to it. It still has a good solid shape, but it's soft on the ends. I hope you like that. If there's any other celebrities you want me to kind of critique and see if we can copy their hair, let me know in the comments below. Check out the other uh, videos on Jatai Academy, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Hey.